Hello biology students. This is Deer Mouse Fur Color from the Field to the Beach, Touch Device to um, act Version. This is Activity 11, Lesson 4.2, Inheritance and Breeding. And we are going to look at, in the multi-level simulation, we're going to discover how mouse fur color is inherited. As you breed large numbers of offspring for mice, you'll be able to observe patterns emerging from the random events of chromosomes, assortment, and fertilization. But before we start lesson 4.2, let's walk back to lesson 4.1 for just a moment. In lesson 4.1, um, on the last page, you needed to create a model. And I have set up a model starter for lesson 4.1 here on the Jamboard. This is our driving question Jamboard. So if you have the link to the driving question Jamboard, you have the link on, this is page four of five, to the model starter. This makes it easier. Um, I took this from the icon page. I took these pictures from the icon page. You can move them around. You can label them. You can use your pen tool here to draw arrows, and I highly recommend you do. And you put in, you can either write in some labels and some descriptions of what's going on here or um, you can take a screenshot of this and then you can do it on uh, a different app. So whatever you do, make a model for the last page of lesson 4.1 and we'll go back to lesson 4.2 now. By now, you've examined the cells and proteins of all three colors of mice in the simulation. Remember, dark, medium, and light. You've also seen that there are many genes and alleles for fur color. In this lesson, you'll have the chance to figure out how fur color is inherited from one generation to the next. We're going to look at fur color of offspring. Question number one. As a warm-up, consider this question. Which parent, the father or mother, determines the biological sex of a baby mouse? Now, gender is a different issue than sex. Let's just remind ourselves of that. This is biological. We're talking chromosomes here. Um, gender is a societal uh, role that you play, and you get to choose your gender. But we don't get to choose our chromosomes. You may wish to use the simulation below to return to the nucleus where you can compare the chromosomes of male and female mice. So we have male and female mice. It doesn't matter what color they are. We can zoom in. Um, we'll go to the nucleus here. We'll zoom in again. And we have to condense these chromosomes. Remember from last time, uncondensed chromosomes are kind of a mess to find what you're looking for. They're also kind of a mess to separate. Um, so uh, cells have evolved to condense their chromosomes into something tidier to organize and divide. They spool them up, they condense them uh, so they can better organize chromosomes. So we're going to do that. We're going to pair them up, um, which happens during meiosis. We're going to inspect a particular pair of chromosomes. This is a female. Um, I know this mouse is a female because it has two X chromosomes. If we look at this mouse, we know this circle right here indicates the sex of the mouse. I know yellow here is female and red is male. Let's zoom in. It doesn't matter that the mice are different colors here. We're just looking at um, the sex chromosomes. So we're going to zoom in again, go to the nucleus. We're going to con condense all the chromosomes. We'll pair them. And as they pair up, we notice that one is smaller. So let's inspect those chromosomes. So that's an X chromosome. And this one's a Y. Y chromosomes um, are a little bit shorter. They have le fewer genes. And if you are biologically a male, you have a Y chromosome. Um, there are conditions called intersex, which are different combinations of chromosomes or chromosomes that aren't functional. Um, generally, we see XX is female and XXY is male. There are conditions that are XXY, there are XYY. 
um, there are a, you can have a non-functional x and just a y or a non-functional uh, y and just an x. Um, some people don't even know their intersects or some organisms don't know their intersects but we're only we're not going to talk about intersects because that complicates the situation here we're just going to talk about xx and xy so here we're going to assume xx is female and xy is male so you're always going to get an x chromosome from your mom uh, maternal chromosomes they only have X chromosomes, so no matter which one you get from mom, it's going to be an X. Dad, uh, father's or paternal chromosomes are the ones that determine a sex of the organism. You can get an X from dad or you can get a Y from dad. If you get a Y, you're a male because you got your X from mom. If you get another X and you have two X's, you're female. So the father determines the sex of the offspring. If the sperm with an X chromosome is, is it in the offspring is female because the offspring has two X's. If you get a Y from your father's sperm, the offspring is male because the offspring will have an X and a Y. So if you get a Y, you're male. If you get a Y, you get it from your dad because your dad's the only one who has the Y. Mom has two X's. Now that we've straightened that out, Let's go and look at some baby mice. Before we get started, let's make some predictions. We've got six pairs of mice. Below you can see the mice in their nests. Let's take a few minutes to examine the pairs and then complete the task below. For each of the nesting pairs, what fur colors will their offspring have? Let's write our predictions in lesson 4.2, table one in your field notebook. So here's the table where we're going to make some predictions. Um, here, this is in a Word document. You might have a PDF or a Google Doc as well. Um, we have different pairs. We're going to cross them. And my class decided to make some uh, Punnett squares to make some predictions. So to remind you how to do Punnett squares, we'll go over to a Jamboard and I'll show you how to set up the Punnett squares so you can do a better job making predictions. So here we are on our Jamboard, and we've got a basic Punnett square here. And let's figure out what's going to happen here. We have one medium parent. We're going to put the medium parent at the top. We know the medium parent has a dark allele for the receptor, a functional receptor that makes the dark darker pigment. And then we know the medium parent also has a light allele some receptors don't attach to the signal protein and signal the rest of the cell to make eumelanin that darker pigment. Darker mice have all functional receptors, so they have two dark, dark alleles for the receptor gene. Now when we fill in a Punnett square, remember we bring one over, we'll bring this D over, and we'll bring this D down. For this square, we'll bring the D on the left over, and we'll bring the L down. The D will come over here in both squares. And the D comes down here and the L comes down here. We'll highlight the side here that has darker mice. These mice, DD, are going to be the dark mice. So we're going to have 50% dark. The other mice with one dark and one light are going to be medium brown mice. So we have ha one half dark and we have one half medium. That translates to 50% dark and 50% medium. So we can put in our chart 50% um, dark and 50% medium. So 50. I'm just going to use D for dark and 50 M for medium. You can go through the rest of the table one in lesson 4.2 and make your predictions. Some of my students got a bit confused when they did the light mouse times the light mouse. I'll show you how that one works. 
So the light mouse only has light alleles. It can't make any dark pigment, so it's not going to be medium or dark. Each parent has only light alleles, so only L's will be in this box. And 100%, assuming there are no mutations in the population, 100% of these mice are going to be light. The same sort of thing happens with dark mice. These are all dark alleles, and um, you can find out what percent of dark mice there are. I'll let you make the rest of the predictions here using Punnett squares on your own sheet of paper, or you can pull up your own Jamboard. Aside from parent fur color, do you think there are any other factors that will influence the offspring's fur color? If you do, what factors and why? Well, there could be some things that um, impact the ability of some uh, animal's ability to make pigment. So um, albinism is a genetic condition where you have no coloring in your fur, or in case of humans, hair and eyes. Um, diet might affect the mouse's ability to make pigments. There's a particular amino acid that's needed to make melanin, and if these mice aren't getting that particular amino acid, it might be more difficult for them to make uh, eumelanin. You can have your own ideas as well. So now we have a new part of the simulation. We have this heredity bar here, and we can breed mice. In the simulation, you can breed nesting pairs of mice to produce offspring. Data about each nesting pair's offspring is shown in a pie chart. You can set the charts to show fur color, genotype, or sex of the offspring. Test our predictions. Using the simulation to test your predictions by breeding the six pairs of mice. Record your findings in Lessons 4.2, Table 2 of your field notebook. Choose a pair to breed by clicking on them. Each time you click the breed button, a litter of mice is produced. Now mice can reproduce about every three and a half weeks. So it's pretty realistic to um, have a number of groups of offspring every year. Pie charts will appear and update to track the offspring as you breed the parents. To choose another pair of parents, click the nesting button. That's right. Uh, well, it'll say nesting when we get to breeding. To choose another pair of parents, uh, the reset button will undo the breeding for the current nest. So let's grab a pair of mice here. Let's click breed. And we've created one litter of mice. Remember, we predicted 50-50. So this first one couldn't be 50-50 because there are only three mice. So we've got 67, 33. Now there's the theoretical probability is 50-50. Now the actual results aren't always, don't always match the theoretical probability. Let's watch as we breed a couple more litters here. We're getting close to the theoretical pro probability, but there'll probably be some randomness as we introduce some more offspring here. That's about a year's worth of offspring for a pair of mice. And it's not quite 50-50, but it may be, um, it's kind of close. So for each nesting pair, compare your results um, with other nesting pairs, since you won't have other students to compare with. Did you record the same fur colors in your table? How many offspring did you each breed? Look at your pie charts. How different were your percentages? So let's just go breed um, the different nesting pairs here and see what happens. We can breed a couple of, of two of pair two. We can go back to nesting and breed a couple of pair three. Notice over here, um, there's more information if we want to look at genotypes or sex, we can um, figure out um, more information on this chart. Let's go to pair four here. Let's breed a few. 
Let's go to pair five. When I want to go to another pair, I just click the nesting button. And if I go to pair six, we'll see what happens. So did you record the same fur colors in your tables? Um, were your predictions the same as the fur colors that ended up in your pie charts? How many offspring did you breed? I've on purpose left the number of offspring a little bit different here so you can notice if there's a difference if the more offspring you breed um, matters for if it's closer to the theoretical probability if there are more offspring or fewer offspring. Look at your pie charts. How different were your percentages? You can look at how different your percentages are were from your predictions versus, so the theoretical probability from a Punnett square to the actual probability in the data. Right now, let's go to the table and fill out our results um, in table two. So here's table two for lesson four point due, and I've recorded a couple of my results here, but you should record your own results and um, you should turn these tables in with your assignment. I'll let you finish up. Did any of the results, your own or your classmates, surprise you? Which ones and why? I know in my class, some people were surprised that um, if you bred medium mice, you got a dark mouse. Or you got all three colors, actually. They didn't think you would get any dark mice. Were you surprised by that? Write it down. So here's, we're gonna reset the simulation for each pair and work with your group, or you can work on your own to study the results of breeding as the number of offspring increase. As you work, record the results in your notebook. First, we should reset though. We're gonna go, um, I've got some data here. If you've got some data in here, make sure you go through to each pair and you press this little reset button. Go into um, the breeding setting, click reset, and then you'll um, it'll clear out the data here and we'll start with nesting. Breed your assigned pair, or in this case, all of them once, and record the percentage of each fur color in the first litter. Then breed them 10 times and record the percentage of fur colors. Then breed more than 10 times, the number's up to you, write in the column title and record the percentage of fur colors. Once you've completed your assignment, be ready to share your findings with the class. During the class discussion, you'll be able to complete the final column for each row. Well, we'll have a slightly different way of doing this and it'll be okay because most of you will be working solo. So let's go to our table. So this is lesson 4.2, table three. We're breeding mice multiple times. And you can see in the table here, there's a place to write down your percentages of dark, medium, and light mice. After you breed just once, you have one litter then there's a place to write down after you've made 10 litters. There's a place to write down after you've done 20 litters. I've decided that number for you. And the, instead of typical results or class estimates, I'm gonna have you do it 30 times. And that should produce enough mice to give you a great idea of what the typical results are. So I um, went to, to the nest, I picked out um, pair one and I bred them one time. So now I have 67% dark and I have 33% medium. Let's record that on our table. 67% dark and 33% medium. You can put 0% light if you want or you can just leave it blank. And I like to put my numbers in a different color so they're easier to see. So I make sure I have filled everything out that I need to. So now let's go breed 10 times. So you'll know when you've bred 10 times 
by the litter number here. So I'm on litter five, I need to do five more. Now I'm on litter 10, I'm gonna stop and record my results. I have 62% dark and 38% medium. So here's 62% dark and 38% medium. We didn't get any light mice. I think you can figure out how to breed 20 times and 30 times and write down your, um, your data. Why is it useful to figure out the typical results? Well, the typical results that we're using here are from a large number of mice. And as we create a, a great deal of data, we usually get closer to the theoretical probability or what we calculated from the Punnett squares. So typical results are usually closer to the theoretical probability you can calculate using a Punnett. When you bred your mice, you did not get the typical results most, if any, of the time. You may have gotten closer and closer and closer as you went up to 30 times. This is normal. Why are the individual results different from the typical results? Well, we've got an example right here. This is 10 times. Um, there's only 37 offspring, so that's not a very large number, and there's a lot of randomness in the way that um, genes are, or alleles are distributed in mating, so we're still seeing that randomness. If we reset and we breed just once, you can see it's very different. Small numbers typically don't match the theoretical probability. But as we go up here and we get more and more offspring, we get closer to the 50-50 theoretical probability that we calculated. So the individual results where you don't have very many mice, where your numbers are relatively small, are different than where you have large sets of data and um, your theoretical probability and actual probability are more likely to match. So we can talk about theoretical probability um, that we calculated. And we did that using Punnett squares. And we can say typical results are from a large number of mice um, and if you are only breeding a small number then your results probably do not match theoretical or calculated probability. from the Punnett square. Here we are at page four. We're gonna cover page four, five, and six in part two of this video for lesson 4.2 in inheritance and breeding for the deer mouse fur color in connected biology. I'll see you in part two.